Hi there, my name is Anna Sherritt. I'm gonna be making Icelandic skier or yogurt today. Skier is something that I and my family developed a love for when we were traveling in Iceland and came home wanting to reproduce it in my own kitchen. So we're gonna get started. You need a large heavy pot such as a Dutch oven or a stainless steel pot. Skier is traditionally made with skim milk, though you can experiment with making skier with 2% or whole milk, whatever your preference. It's really important to clean your pot in the beginning and make sure there's no residue of savory foods in it. And once you have a nice clean pot, you're going to fill it with a whole gallon of milk. Set it on medium and be careful not to stir up anything that does form on the bottom. So I'm going to give this a nice little stir and make sure that my thermometer has its tip well into the pot. So initially we're going to be heating this up to a temperature of 185, 190 in that zone to kill any possible bad bacteria that we don't want. And then we'll be bringing the temperature back down to 110 where the cultures that we introduce can live. It's going to take a while and you can again sit with your pot and stir it and watch it or you can go on with the rest of your life and make sure you don't forget about it. While your milk is coming up to temperature, one thing that you can do to prepare is to get the rennet ready. There are two different kinds of rennet that are available. One is a liquid vegetable rennet and the other one is rennet tablets. And I've had more consistent luck with the tablets, so that's what I prefer to use. And I only use a quarter of a tablet, so this stuff goes a long way. And they have lines on them, so you can actually cut a quarter of a tablet really easily. So we're going to get a small amount of water in our container, warm water. Not an exact measurement, I just do a swipe or two through. So you just have a very small amount of water. And you're going to dissolve one rennet tablet in there. And you can stir it around a little bit, but you can also just set it aside and it will dissolve on its own. One of the reasons it's important to come back and stir frequently is it can develop a film on the top. If that happens, you can simply lift that film out and discard it, but it's preferable to just keep stirring it regularly to avoid that film. All right, so I'm excited to say that we are, I believe, up to temperature here. It's good when your thermometer is showing about 180, 185 to just give it a stir again and make sure it's uniform. And you'll see um, steam starts to come off of it, which it's doing just a little bit right now. I can feel there's a film that's formed, and that is totally fine. It's pretty hard to avoid, honestly. But the key here is not to take the sharper edge of your spoon and scrape into that. We are right at 190 it looks like, so I'm going to turn the temperature off and I want to make some effort to get this off the heat. It has to cool back to 110 degrees. If your temperature of your milk does drop below 110, you're doing other things, you miss it. That's happened to me before and I've had luck just warming it back to 110 starting from there. So we've let our skier cool and we're down to 110 degrees, which is a safe temperature to add the active cultures in. There are two ways you can reintroduce cultures in your skier. One is that you can use skier you've made before and just save a little bit. Or you, if you are starting from scratch, you can buy skier in the store or even just buy a plain yogurt, no sugar in it whatsoever, and make sure it has active cultures in it. So what you need is three, four, five tablespoons of skier with active cultures. And then you're going to add some of your warm milk. Again, don't do this if it's above 110 degrees. We're going to stir this in until it becomes nice and uniform and pourable so that you don't have any chunks. So I want to stir really carefully when I'm adding things into the skier. I want to make sure that the cultures move through all the milk and that the rennet moves through all the milk. But I still want to be cognizant of that film on the bottom of the pan. Our rennet 
which you can see has dissolved here. Also add that in. And just give it a nice careful stir to make sure it's mixed uniformly. So we want to do this fairly quickly to make sure we retain the heat that we have in the milk. Go ahead and put a lid on it for starters. Then you need some nice big towels. And I like to lay them out in opposing directions so I can give my scare a really nice tuck in for the night. Set it right in the middle and wrap that baby up. And you can set it in a warmish place for the night, not somewhere that's drafty. You can leave it anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. All right, so our skier has sat overnight and we're ready to reveal and see how it did. Go ahead and open it up. Excellent. So it looks just how we want. We have loose whey on the top and a fairly jiggly product in there. So the first thing we're going to do is have a setup here of a bowl and a colander with a nice muslin towel or you could use layers of cheesecloth. You're going to start by skimming off some of the excess whey easily get. This is my favorite part of making skier. You actually get to cut the curd. It's very rewarding to see how well your skier has set up. One thing I'm being careful of is you may have some scalding on the bottom of your pot and you do not want your knife tip to touch into any burned material at the bottom. Right. You're going to see the magic here. There are the curds. And again, I'm being quite careful not to scrape on the bottom of the pot. I come to the end where it's a little easier to lift. And you'll end up seeing if anything burned on the bottom. Not so bad. You can see there is a little bit down there. So you do want to be careful not to get that scalded material in because it will affect the taste of the skier. But I often will go back and eat this just separately without putting it into my whole batch. All right, so your next step, and this is something you're going to have to figure out in your own kitchen how this will work for you. But you're going to gather up the corners of your cloth and we want to rig up a way to strain the skier. You can see in the beginning a whole lot of whey is going to come out, but I do recommend letting this sit for a while also. Um, so we're going to rig up a way to let it sit. I typically use a rubber band. I'm going to make a little loop here that we will be able to put a spoon through as part of our straining method. I have rigged something up in all sorts of kitchens, in refrigerators, on counters, on bakery carts, with my kids' wooden blocks. Somehow you need a way to hang your skier like this. All right, so I'll show you what I've come up with today using some things you might have in your kitchen. And a bowl for catching the whey. So once you have it set up like this, you could leave it for a short period of time, 20 or 30 minutes, or you could leave it much longer. Some recipes say six hours overnight, but I recommend doing at least half an hour and watching until the whey kind of slows down. When your skier has strained sufficiently, 
you can take this whole contraption apart and you're gonna check out your finished product. Colander here. See all the lovely way we collected, which you can save for another use if you like. Let's see how it looks. There you have it. And the final step here is just to collect it in a jar you want to store it in. I really like this kind of sharper metal spoon for this because I can really scrape the cloth clean. And this is the reason I choose a muslin cloth over layers of cheesecloth. I generally just find it easier to work with, but I really like how clean I can get the cloth because I don't want to waste any of my skin. When you're making this, it's pretty incredible how much liquid you remove. Out of a gallon of milk, you end up with maybe a little more than two quarts of skier. When you have it stored like this in your refrigerator, I'd say it's safe to keep it for a week or 10 days. It doesn't last that long in my house, but definitely, you know, within 10 days if you eat it, you'll be just fine. Okay, now for the fun part. We get to dish up our finished product. There are a lot of ways you can eat skier. You can add sweetener to it. You could eat it with granola. You can certainly eat it with savory foods, but my absolute favorite is probably the simplest and it's very common in Iceland. You take this lovely fat-free yogurt and you drown it in heavy cream add some berries and dig in. I kind of love that. I feel like it says something about Icelandic culture, which is there's a lot about Iceland that's very wholesome. People spend a lot of time outdoors. They eat very healthy food, but there's also an enjoyment of that life that I really appreciate in Iceland. So then you add some nice heavy whipping cream and some berries of your choice. 